The ongoing blockade of Gaza has been relaxed today, but Israel refuses to announce its stoppage. This comes after growing international pressure following the forced closure of Gaza's main power plant, leaving residents of Gaza Strip without electricity. The Israeli Defence Minister, Ehud Barak, has authorised a temporary relaxation of the embargo so that essential diesel and cooking oil can be distributed to the region. To the region. Jacob Greaves reports live from Gaza. Thank you, Catherine. In Gaza, the mood is one of relief and apprehension. Today, citizens have returned to some form of normality as emergency fuel reached the Gaza plant that supplies over 70% of the region with its electricity. But people here remain uncertain on what lies ahead. The Israeli government is yet to announce a deadline on its blockade, and its temporary relaxation seems more of one of forced international pressure than a sign of policy change. Earlier today, as desperation mounted, some Palestinians attempted to cross the Rafah border into Egypt, where they were met with Egyptian gunfire as security forces stopped anyone from crossing the border. In an emergency session later today, the UN will attempt to deal with some of the new problems posed by the crisis. Aid workers have said more pressure must be put on Israel. You can't hope to resolve a crisis through such temporary measures. For the UN, a routine Middle East dilemma remains high on their agenda. With the people behind me, food, water and electricity are today's only concerns. It's Jacob Greaves, Gaza. It's for decades been a conflict between choice and life. But for a new generation of expectant mothers, the issue of abortion has taken a disturbing new twist. Unprecedented scientific advances are allowing for conditions in the womb to be envisaged in startling detail. But a growing minority of women are not happy with what they see. For the first time, prenatal disabilities are diagnostically visible at the smallest levels. And the current law, or some might argue to be smallest of faults, can grounds for termination at any stage in a pregnancy. So the government has called upon the Health and Science Technology Committee, a body of MPs, doctors and experts, some pro-life and some pro-choice. Its aims to re-evaluate the 1967 Abortion Act and to recommend any changes needed for the upcoming Human Tissue and Embryo Bill. But what exactly have the committee been reviewing and what, if any, are the changes they've actually made? So how do you yourself respond to uh, people who say you're wrong to allow that abortion to take place? Um, what was I saying? Uh, <laughs> Basically, I'd say that a they didn't well, they weren't involved in the individual case. They didn't uh, they didn't know all the facts and figures behind it all, and exactly how the woman had been counselled, how I had been counselled, um, exactly how bad the cleft lip and palate was. That tightening in terms of serious disability, with the recommendation to remove the requirement of two doctor signatures, cases like this will continue to flaunt abortion law. Whatever the ethics and the issues at large, the government has failed in creating a consistent policy as regards abortion. So, for now, and for the coming future, it seems the gaze of a country's eyes will be focused on this historic building behind me and those who's walked its great schools.